Hey you guys, today we're gonna be freeze drying corn and we're gonna test out Carolyn's cream corn recipe, which we've never done with the freeze dried corn before. So this is pretty exciting. But first, we've gotta harvest the corn. When we're harvesting corn, we wanna make sure it's ready. You wanna see the tassels usually start to brown. Okay, that's a hint. You also wanna see this start to fill out well. And when we're first checking, we're gonna open it up just a little down inside so we can see the top of the ear. Now you can see here, this one, corn is filled out almost to the top and not quite up here. These haven't developed yet. And these ones actually don't look like they're gonna develop. So this particular ear may not have gotten well pollinated, but the corn down underneath is done. And regardless for us today, uh, we've got rain coming, we've got frost coming. And so we've got to get the corn in anyways, but you're looking to see this brown at the top. And then you're looking to see your kernels filled up near the top or close to the top. Sometimes uh, it won't make it all the way up either because it's not ready or because your pollination just didn't get that very end. That just happens sometimes. Now, when you're testing, if it's not ready, you wanna peek at the top and then leave it. You don't wanna open everyone up a whole lot because then it gets susceptible to bugs and uh, mildew and different things. So just do your test. If it's not ready, leave it there or take the ears that are ready. In this case, we're gonna harvest the whole corn patch today. I have got my whole crew today to help harvest corn. Are you guys ready to get this done? Yeah! Right, let's get to it. What do you got? I got two for the rice. You got lots of corn. Did you guys get them all? Yeah. Cool. All right, let's take them in house. We got to start shucking. All right. Okay. Okay. So first things first, we've got to shuck all this corn. And, uh, you know, there's no real big trick to it. It's just the work that's got to get done that you want to get all the outside off. And you want to get these hairs off. This all just depends on how picky you are. You can take your fingers and just kind of run them around like that. Some people like to take a little brush to try to get them off. And then sometimes you don't have to worry about it. For, for this, we're, we're going to do the best we can quickly. But I'm not going to worry about it a whole lot. So we've almost got this done. And I am estimating about 12 cobs per tray. We've got the larger Harvest Right freeze dryer, five trays. That's about uh, 60 ears of corn. We're going to be freeze drying just the kernels. So now we've got to get them off the cob. And to do that, we're just going to cut them off. This is the simplest way we've found to do it. And we'll often do this when we're freezing or dehydrating. Works real well. You want to get as much as you can, but you don't really want to get uh, a bunch of the cob in here. That's just not, uh, it's just not going to taste good. It's not going to be nice to chew on. Put that into our bowl. Okay, well, I'm gonna finish this up and we'll come back in a few minutes when we're ready to put it into the trays. Okay, so one of the things that I wanna mention uh, as we're getting ready to put these in the tray is about blanching. A lot of times, well, pretty much all the time when you are free, uh, freezing vegetables, you blanch them first. Uh, with the freeze dryer, that is really not necessary. If we were freeze drying as a meal, like a ready meal that we just wanted to rehydrate and eat, then we would want to cook the corn first, prep it however it was if we were going to eat it right then and freeze dry it as such. Our goal here is just to freeze dry this corn as it is, no seasoning, no anything. So then it's then ready to use to put into a meal like a corn chowder or a um, what we're going to do here with this, which is a cream of corn. And so this just can go right into the tray and that, that uh, saves a big step from actually having to blanch. Another thing that I've noticed that people have done that we have not tried, and that is freeze drying corn on the cob whole. And um, 
that would be pretty cool. I'm curious how that's going to turn out, and, and uh, I think Carolyn's actually going to give that a try. Uh, however, uh, most of your instructions for freeze drying want you to cut things up into bite-sized bits. They just generally dry better that way. So we want to fill the tray up. I'm not really packing, I'm just smoothing it out here. I want to get uh, as much in as I can without overfilling it or packing it. And uh, just filling it up to about the top of the tray. You probably know this, make sure that you get down a sill pat or some parchment paper or something onto your tray. And uh, just gonna, gonna uh, help everything out a little bit. So we've got all five of our trays ready to go here. And we're gonna load up the harvest right and get this going. And just another little tip, when you're filling these, you can fill these full, but you generally don't want to fill them over the tops of the sides. So we've got our corn in our freeze dryer. We want to put in our insulator pad. And you can pre-freeze things if you want. We don't generally choose to. We're just going to let the machine do its job. We're going to hit start. Now this is a not frozen, so you want to make sure and make that selection. And we want to load the food into the freeze dryer and close the drain, the drain valve. We've obviously already loaded the food. There is a drain valve back here. Just want to make sure that's closed. And it is. We can continue. And here we go. All right, you guys, we got it done and we got everything in the freeze dryer. And this is gonna take probably around 24 hours. And uh, we'll come back and check it out, package it, and make some cream corn when this is ready. Well, this corn is ready to come out of here now. The freeze drying process is complete. I just finished it. So I think these trays may be a little cold still, yep. But that is looking good. Right, look at that. Next, we need to go ahead and get this put up and I'm gonna show you two different ways. You can certainly use the um, these Mylar bags they provide, I think they're Mylar, that they provide. And these are great if you're traveling or something, but for home storage, they're just really not practical and we don't wanna use something like that that we pretty much gotta throw away. So good old half gallon jar is great to put these in. You can use a scooper, whatever you need. I'm just gonna gather them up, get them, get this in here. Funnel helps a little bit. Okay, so not quite a half gallon for 13 ears. Gonna be a little bit more. Right, there we go. This is a great easy way to access this. And then you could vacuum seal it, but the oxygen absorbers will do the same thing here. So you can put one of these oxygen absorbers in and this will actually seal this for you. And you can store this indefinitely. It's there for you to use. You can use, use it off of it through the season as you need. Now, these are great. They look pretty on the shelf. Um, but we go through a lot of food and a lot of corn. And so if you want another bulk storage solution, a gamma seal style bucket like this is great. And this has, this is a food grade storage bucket with a gamma seal lid. So it has a very good rubber seal on the rim here that snaps on. And then this screws down and has a seal. And, um, for our uses, this is a lot more appropriate. We've already got one batch in here and we're gonna go ahead and get the next one in. And this now has two batches from the freeze dryer in it, minus that um, half gallon there. And it, it would take one more. Probably, this would probably take one more batch. It's about two thirds full. 
Um, so this would take one more full batch for us, which we will definitely do and fill this up. So this is probably a lot uh, better use of time and space if you've got enough corn. And you just zip that down. And of course these will steal, seal for a very long time too. If you were wanting to do deep storage, you could add the oxygen um, absorbers in there. We don't know, this is gonna store great. We're gonna use this over the course of the next uh, nine months or so, nine to 12 months, and this will work just great. Now on to the fun part, and we are gonna make some really, really good cream corn. The thing to do to start is we're gonna take some cream, some heavy cream, either from the cow or that you have uh, purchased. And we're gonna start with two cups. This will be two to three cups, depending on how this rehydrates. And just FYI, I'm not giving a printed re uh, recipe here. And uh, so you're gonna have to write it down as you go. And we often make things suited to taste uh, as we go along. So these are guidelines, do what you want with it, all right? So we're starting with two cups of heavy cream and we're gonna take four cups of freeze-dried corn. Now, this is the freeze-dried corn, so this has no moisture in it. And uh, we're gonna use this cream to rehydrate it, okay? Now, this is the part that's gonna take a while. You don't wanna be on high heat because you're in this cream. You certainly don't want to burn or scorch the cream. And uh, just gonna have to do this on a low to medium heat and just gonna have to warm it up until the corn starts to get soft. And it's gonna look like maybe you don't have enough liquid when you first put it in. And you may end up wanting to add a little bit more just depending exactly on your corn. And like right now, I feel like I'd like to add a little bit more, but you gotta realize that moisture is gonna suck up in there. So we're gonna give it a few minutes to start absorbing before we decide whether I wanna add any more cream or not. So this has definitely absorbed all that two cups of cream and it's not fully um, hydrated yet. Got a ways to go. So we're gonna go ahead and add one more cup of cream. And you know, don't worry about if it's too much. You can always cook it down a little bit. We're gonna do that at the end to get it the consistency that we want it. You might like it a little thinner. Um, another person might like it a little thicker. Um, so you can make that however you uh, like it. Okay, we're about 10 minutes in here rehydrating this corn with the cream. And let's see how it's doing. It's getting there. Another five to 10 minutes. So this is the longest part. I was just getting this rehydrated, but I like doing it with the cream because that flavor is just gonna soak right into the corn. Now we've got to add our butter, two tablespoons of butter and either a um, teaspoon of salt to start, or I like to just season to taste as I go along. But if you want a measurement to start with, um, one to two teaspoons will do it. And then just get it to your taste. And we really want some pepper in here. I like a lot of pepper myself, like a lot of flavor, but not everybody in my house appreciates that much spicy. So we're gonna get that butter melted. Now we're gonna wanna add, I'm gonna start with a cup of milk to add back into this. We're gonna keep cooking this down. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit, start to move this along, because I want it to cook down. You're gonna to wanna to mix in two tablespoons of flour. This is gonna help it start to thicken up. And again, this is a starting point. You can always add a little bit more, and it's a little trickier working with the freeze-dried corn than if it was fresh corn. So you want to leave yourself a little bit of room in case you've got to adjust the milk or flour to get it the consistency that you want. Hey, this is coming along pretty nicely. Still gonna want it to thicken up just a little bit. And this is really 
a matter of personal taste, but before you get it down to its final, uh, just the way you want it, you want to add, and this is optional, but this is really, really, really good. So we're going to do a cup of bacon, this bacon, homegrown bacon here, along with the corn, that uh, diced up real small and fried up first. You're going to take just about a cup. We've got close to a cup. I'm just going to put it all in here because I like to dump cook. Okay. Mmm, man, the bacon is good. And a cup of onions, which the same is just about, I got it just about right, actually. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. Ooh, man, that is going to be really, really good. So we're going to stir that in. That's going to change the consistency. This is where you may end up needing to add a little more milk, depending on if you do this or not. And then we're going to continue to let it cook down for a while. We'll turn the heat up just a little. And yeah, I think I want a little more milk. And we're just going to let this settle and cook all the flavors in. To top it off, we're going to add some Parmesan cheese. Whew. Melt that in and I think we're going to be ready. Okay, let's check this out and see if it's ready to serve. Wow, look at that. Look at that. That is going to be tasty, I think. Woo! Wow, very good. And hey, if you want a tip on a ready-made meal, you could reverse this process, make this whole dish right here, then freeze-dry it, and put that in the jar, and then all you've got to do is rehydrate it, and you've got a fantastic ready meal right here. So. Um, there you go. There is corn from the field to preservation to an awesome meal right here. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure and click the link and check out our other videos on freeze drying. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe now and we'll see you soon.